Now, the word antibiotics eh, is to here to stop the growth, highlight only for bacteria, okay, without harming the cells of the infected organism. So, in fact, okay, we have to know the antibiotic to equal to antibacterial. Uh, Okay, it's not right? it wouldn't you we don't use it to cure the fungus, but occasionally some doctor may, okay, but generally antibiotics for bacteria. Okay, so and most of the bacterial antibiotics are derived from living organisms, for example, for the fungus, but some bacteria like isoniazite actually they are synthetic. Okay, so antibiotics okay that we use must be selective. Always remember, must be selective without harming the cells of the infected organism. So one of the best way actually we target the synthesis of the bacterial cell wall. Okay, the peptidoglycan cell wall. Okay, we target peptidoglycan cell wall. Why peptidoglycan cell wall? Because it's bacterial cell wall. First, second, we target cell wall means that. It won't have the harmful effect to humans or to the animal because why? The animal, plants, human, we don't have the peptidoglycan sour. We don't have the sour at all for humans. So it's safe. Okay. Now, why we cannot use antibiotic for the viruses? Because viruses, they also don't have sour. Can you see that? So therefore, we can use the, this or activity of protein. Some protein only appear in the bacteria. So then we target the particular protein that stop their growth, okay? Now, enzyme action, some enzyme also only available in the bacteria only, DNA synthesis, particularly their DNA is a circular DNA, so it means that it's something different from humans, therefore we can use it, okay, or target it, okay? Next, protein synthesis. So if you have protein synthesis, particularly we know that their ribosome, we target the ribosome, so because the bacteria are 70 as ribosome. Clear? Okay, so with this 70S ribosome, we can target, but we may say that, oh, in humans, eh, our mitochondria also have 70S ribosome, but you have to understand that mitochondria, if you look at this as a cell, and mitochondria is double membrane bound. So it means that for the drug to enter, it's not so, uh, how do I say that? Eh? For enter into the mitochondria, it's not that. Uh, high rate okay so therefore these are the methods we can use to target the bacteria so which one is the better one the best one definitely the first one why because we can target the specifically okay we can target a protein some protein may be the same some enzyme will be the same dna synthesis and the enzyme involved in the protein synthesis human also we have the uh, this uh protein synthesis so the best actually we target this bacterial cell wall. Okay? So in this diagram, just for information only, do not need to memorize. So we are going to learn the penicillin, which targets the cell wall synthesis. Can you see that? Okay, we're going to learn later in penicillin. Okay, another one actually asked by the question quite a number of times is the streptomycin. Okay? But streptomycin is not in our syllabus. Basically, streptomycin involved in the protein synthesis targets the protein synthesis, okay? By inhibiting the small subunits, okay? Small subunits of the um, ribosome, okay? So effective antibiotic must show selective toxicity, yeah? it must show selective toxicity. So killing and disable the pathogen or bacteria but have no effect on the host cell. Very, very important. And this antibiotic can either be bactericidal or bacteriostatic. Bactericidal, cider means kill, kill the bacteria. Static means that to stop the growth. So you look at this graph, okay? So control that without any antibiotics, you can see that the population, the number of viable bacteria continue to increase. Can you see that? But if you use a bacterial cider, for example, penicillin, then you can see that it dropped to zero, kill the bacteria. But if you use a bacterial static agent, means that the number remains the same. Okay, so got, got advantages and disadvantages, okay, in this case. Now, if you use a bacterial static, bacterial static in this case, you can see that, okay, bacteria still remain inside our body but the number is low, okay, maintain, 
so that our body immune system can actually can eh, immune system can target them immune system can actually kill them eh, it depends on the immune system so therefore our immune system immune response can have time to develop but this is not suitable to those bacteria may kill us within a short period of time. So if the bacteria that can kill us within a short period of time, then we, must, we may want to use a bactericidal agent to kill the bacteria straight away. So one example here, penicillin. Okay. So if you compare mode of action, bactericidal, so bactericidal activities, they kill the micro microbial of uh, this bacteria cell. Bacteriostatic, we prevent the growth and the microbial right, of the microbial cells. Number of microorganisms, it will decrease. But this one remains the same after the introduction of antibiotic. Viable of the microorganism, whether they are still alive or not, confirm bactericidal kill them. Bacteriostatic, they are still uh, viable, but it's just that it won't grow. Okay, where the immune system cells are involved, the bacteriocidal do not need because the bacteriocidal can kill the uh, bacteria already. Bacteriostatic, yes, we need the immune system to kill the microorganism. So when these drugs are used in low dose, for example, bacteriocidal used in low dose, they can behave like the bacteriostatic. But if a bacteriostatic, you use it at a low dose, it may not have effect on the bacteria. So example, penicillin is a type of bactericidal. Tetracycline is a bacterial statics. Okay. So we have this minimum inhibitory concentrations. So it's the minimum concentration of drug needs to inhibit the bacterial growth by bacteriostatic agent. Okay. So we also have the minimum bactericidal concentration is a minimum concentration of bacterial cider drugs need to kill the bacteria. So if we know the minimum dose, we don't increase it because it may have a side effect. Okay, so we do have the broad spectrum antibiotic effective against the wide range of bacteria. We do have the narrow spectrum antibiotic which only targets a few of them. Okay, any questions so far, guys? So if you need this table so so one of the antibiotics that we need to learn here is a penicillin so before we start the penicillin let us look at because penicillin target the cell wall of the bacteria let us look at the bacterial cell wall how they look like so you look at bacterial cell wall they form by this what we call the peptidoglycan and peptidoglycan so also known in some books called murine so they are a consistent of sugar and amino acid linked together. So if you look at this, the sugar component consists of alternating residues of the N-acetyl glucosamines and also N-acetyl muramic acid. So both of them form this polymer. Okay? Can you see that? NAG, NAM, NAG, NAM, and so on. But these polymer need to be linked together. So how we link together? We link it with this peptide cross bridge. Can you see that? Peptide cross bridge or simple, we call it cross bridge. Okay. So the peptide chains can be cross linked to the peptide chains of another strand forming the 3D mesh light layer. So one layer, two layer like this. Okay. So they have this cross bridge. So bacterial cycle serve a structural role in the eh, bacterial cell wall, giving the structure support the bacterial cells so that they can withstand the turgor pressure. So penicillin is a group of antibiotic derived originally from a common mold known as penicillin mold. So the word penicillin actually is a generic, uh, is a general term for antibiotic that contain the beta lactam unit. So this is the beta lactam unit. Can you see that? The four membranes. Can you see that? The four membrane. This is a beta, uh, beta lactam unit in the chemical structures. So penicillin inhibit activity enzyme that are needed for the cross-linking of the peptidoglycan in a bacterial cell wall, which is the final step of cell wall biosynthesis. Now, what actually happened here? Highlight: penicillin only can target the growing bacteria. Okay, the can only targets the growing bacteria, not all kind of bacteria. So why growing? Look at this, huh? So for bacteria, you do you realize that enlarge it. They have this, what we call the peptidoglycan cell wall and linked together by this, what we call the cross-link. 
So when cells grow, because when growing of the cells, we need the osmosis water molecule enter. So when water molecule enter, so the cell actually expand. Can you see that? But the cell wall is very rigid. So how the cell can expand? The bacteria cells first have to secrete one of the enzymes called otolysin. This enzyme. So otolysin going to destroy and right, degrade this cross link or cross bridge. So weakens the cell wall. Are you clear? Okay, uh, first autolysis weak, eh? remove the cross link. So making this, uh, what we call this, uh, cell wall become weaker. So when a cell wall become weaker already, then water molecule enter. The net entry of water molecule by osmosis then increase the volume of the cells. Clear not? So we increase the volume of the cells. Now, the next thing, the enzyme actually form back this cross link. Are you clear? Transpeptidase, this enzyme, okay? Transpeptidase, this enzyme going to form back the cross link. <clears throat> so when they form back this cross link, then the cell wall become rigid, then the bacteria grow already. Now, what will happen to the penicillin? Penicillin actually inhibit this enzyme. So means that bacteria break. Can you see that? In this diagram, bacteria still remove the cross link. But with the presence of penicillin, penicillin stop the, eh, the, the cross-link from being made. Can I see that penicillin? So penicillin inhibits the enzymes that form back the cross-link. So it means that the, uh, therefore the cell wall progressively become weaker and weaker and weaker. Are you clear? Become more and more weak until osmosis take place, the cell's wall so weak until they can't withstand the turbulent pressure. So therefore, the cell lies, okay? So in the bacterial cell wall, we do have the peptidoglycan. So this peptidoglycan linked together by this cross link. So this cross link is eh, uh, formed by this transpeptidase. So therefore, penicillin only active against the bacteria while they are growing. So first of all, what they do, bacterial cells actually secrete an enzyme known as autolysin. So hydrolyze the crosslink between the peptidoglycan. So allow the wall to be stretched, the wall to be weakened. So this transpeptidase is the enzyme that synthesizes the crosslink between the peptidoglycan chain. So this penicillin prevent the peptidoglycan chain from the linking A, from linking up. So this achieved through the binding of the four member B beta lactam ring of penicillin to the enzyme transpeptidase. However, the autolysin keep on hydrolyzing the, these are uh, cross link. Cell wall become progressively weaker. Bacteria, they live in the watery environments and taken up the water molecule by osmosis down the water potential gradient. So when cell wall is weakened, the cell wall cannot withstand the turgor pressure exerted on them. So therefore, with the increased turgor pressure, the cells, and uh, bacterial cells burst. Okay, so this is how antibiotic penicillin actually functions. Okay, so with this, I've done for today class, eh? antibiotic.